Good morning, Aubrey Hill. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen, amen. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on this morning, isn't it? Shall we stand for our call to worship on this morning? For our call to worship on this morning, we come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal, rejection, and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wave palm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. At this time, we'll be led in prayer. I'm, I'm sorry, in an opening selection from our music ministry. Following that, we will be led in scripture by Sister Princess Lynch and then in prayer by DeMonte Bullock in that order. God bless you. Has the Lord done anything for you this morning? Yes. And how about all the rest of the week? Because we ought to give him praise this morning. And thank him for all that he has done. Tell me who do you think woke you up early this morning? Nobody but Jesus. He made it possible. Yeah. Tell me who do you think thought it you only away? Nobody but Jesus. He made it possible. Yeah. Tell me who do you think food on your table? Nobody but Jesus. He made it possible. Yeah. Tell me who do you think clothes on your back? Nobody but Jesus. He made it possible. That's why we are to serve, serve him better. Yeah, that's why we are to serve, serve him better. Yeah, Jesus made it possible. Jesus made it possible. Oh, 
Nobody but Jesus He made it impossible Yeah Tell me who Do you think Started you on your way Nobody but Jesus He made it impossible Did he make it possible for you this morning? Yeah. Did he wake you up this morning? Yeah. Did he start you on your way? That's why we are to make it possible. Make it possible. Make it possible. Jesus. Make it possible. Jesus. Make it possible. Jesus. Jesus.
How many of you need the Spirit of the Lord to fall down on you this morning? Yes. Has God been good to anybody yes. other than myself this morning? Yes. The devil is busy on me this morning, but I pray to God that he would give me the strength to do the best that I can going forward yes. and give him all the praise and glory yes. because he is yes. truly worthy. Yes. Thank you, God. We're all gathered here in your presence, Lord, with our arms open wide, with lifted hands and with open hearts, we welcome you to our Yeah. 
How many want the Spirit of God to fall fresh on you on this morning? Amen. Spirit, fall fresh on me. Yes, yes. How many know that we can't do anything without the Spirit of God? And so we need the Spirit of God to fall fresh on us on this morning. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we will have our a Women's Month presentation at this time. All right. Amen. Good morning, Ivory Hill. If you haven't spoken to your neighbor, why don't you speak to him, wave at someone, say something kind to someone this morning. Be nice to somebody in your church. Act godly. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. Do we have any first-time visitors in the church on this morning? We're not going to ask you to say anything. If you would, just slip your hand up. If this is your first time visiting with us, amen, amen. On behalf of myself and the members of the church, we would like to welcome you to the Ivory Hill Baptist Church. Anytime that the doors of the church are open, you're more than welcome to come and to worship with us. Amen. Ivory Hill, can we show them some love on this morning? Amen. And we thank God for those that are watching, watching with us this morning online as well. Amen. Amen. Our announcements today. Uh, this afternoon, immediately following our morning service, uh, we will have our first quarter church meeting. And so we're asking all members to attend that. We're not going to be in here long, but just uh, ask that if you will stay back just for a little bit right after service. Also, the Reedy Creek Missionary Baptist Association will host the 2024 Congress of Christian Education, and this will be held at the Odell Missionary Baptist Church located at 1736, I'm, tar I'm sorry, 1763 Ember Odell Road, and that's in Littleton, North Carolina, and this will also be streamed on the Facebook page of uh, Reedy Creek, and this will take place on March the 30th at 10 a.m. and so all are, are welcome to attend. The festival committee will meet on Monday, March the 25th at 6 p.m. in the conference room. All right, and then also um, we will host uh, the monthly NC Food Bank on Tuesday, March the 26th and this will start at 11 a.m. and they're asking all volunteers to please report by 9 a.m. And in place of um, the office hours, the office being open on Tuesday and Thursday of this week, the office will be open on Monday and Friday of this week. The hours are still the same from 9 to 1. Amen? These are your announcements. We ask that you would bear them in mind and govern yourselves accordingly. Also, please keep our sick and our shut-in in prayer, uh, praying that God will continue to bless them and continue to touch their bodies. We thank God for each and every last one of them. We're having a mighty good time in Sunday school. We're having a good time in our Bible study. And those that attend Bible study before you leave today, the new handouts um, are here. So immediately following our um, church meeting, if you would, grab your handout, uh, if you will. Amen? Amen. It's offering time. We're going to call around our young people today, Brother Aaron Lynch and Sister Riley Hinton. Amen, amen. Amen. Let us thank God for our young people on this morning. Amen. With your offering in your hand, with your offering lifted in your right hand, because we want to give God what's right and not what's left, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to give back a portion of what you have given to us. And so, Father, we pray now that you would bless the gifts and the givers. Allow this offering to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask all things. Amen. Please follow the directions of the ushers at this time. God bless you.
God is my all and all. Can anybody say that on today? Is that your testimony on today? Is God your all and your all on this morning? Amen. Amen. Somebody shout, God is my all and all. Amen. If that's your testimony, why don't you put your hands together and bless the Lord on this morning? Amen. And while we're in the clapping mood, why don't we go ahead and give our music ministry a hand on this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank God for a, a young man that's subbing in for us on this morning. Why don't we bless God for him? Thank God for our young people who actually uh, lifted up the offering and did the scripture and prayer for us today and those that are working in the AV room. And we thank God for you, you, and you, my Heavenly Father's children. Why don't we all just give God a hand on this morning? Amen. 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 It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on this morning. Shall we pray, Father, it's in Jesus' name that we come to you and we say thank you. We thank you, God, for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your kindness that you extend to us each and every day. And now, Lord, as we approach this time of preaching, I've studied to show myself approved, but I can't stand here and declare this gospel without you. I pray that you would send your anointing that makes preaching and receiving your word easy. Send your anointing that this word will bless your people, that your church will be edified, and Father, you alone will be glorified. High core wind behind the cross, allow me to decrease, that you will be the increase. Simply saying, Father, allow this people to look far past me, that they might see more of thee. For this is our prayer. It's in the name of the one who is altogether lovely. It's in the name of our Lord and our Savior, and soon coming King Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. We've been in a sermon series this month entitled what? Give me some good news. And as we know, everybody likes some good news every now and then. Amen. And the first week we preached from the thought what? The good news of holding your peace. Amen. The second week we preach from the thought what? The good news of right timing. And then last week we preach what? Yes. The good news of a proper response. Amen. Anybody know what the proper response is? Can you say we preached all that and don't nobody know what the proper response is? Y'all listening to the sermons each week? Y'all hear me this morning? Is mic on? The good news of a proper response. And on this morning, this Palm Sunday morning, I want to call your attention to the book of Matthew on this morning. Travel with me, if you will, to the 27th chapter of Matthew. And I want to start reading at the 15th verse. And I'll be reading and you're hearing from the New King James Version of the text. Matthew 27, starting at the 21st. I'm sorry, starting at the 15th verse of the New King James Version of the text. Where the word of the Lord declares, now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom? Do you want me to release to you Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? 
for he knew that they had handed him over because of envy and while sitting while he was sitting on the judgment seat his wife speaking of Pilate sent to him saying have nothing to do with that just man for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus the governor answered and said to them which of the two do you want me to release to you they said Barabbas Pilate said to them what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ they all said to him let him be crucified then the governor said why what evil has he done but they cried out all the more saying let him be crucified when Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all but rather that a tumult was rising he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated in the Lord's church. On this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to use for a sermonic thought the good news of being rejected. The good news of being rejected. My brothers and sisters, experiencing rejection is something that I believe that all of us in this place can relate to. Uh, and it can bring about a range of negative emotions within us all. Amen. Rejection, my brothers and sisters, is a deep-seated emotion that strikes at the very heart of our existence. It is the painful sensation of being cast aside, the painful sensation of being unappreciated or denied acceptance. Uh, this unwelcome companion can rear its head in many realms of our lives, be it in matters of the heart, in matters of the workplace, in matters of our social circles, or even in our personal endeavors and when we face uh, with a romantic rejection I know that many of us probably have experienced that before you you like somebody and they didn't like you back and you thought she was cute and she already had a boyfriend or you wanted him and and locking on down the street she already had him and all of this other stuff and and you felt rejected uh, yeah, yeah, when faced with a, a, a romantic rejection or you've had a job application to be declined, you apply for the job and God bless you, Pastor, good to see you. Uh, you apply for the job and you did not get the job or a friendship uh, not reciprocated or, or any other form of uh, dismissal. Uh, the emotional impact of being rejected can be profound. Have I got a witness? So my brothers and my sisters, being rejected can be a, a challenging experience, if you will, and, and often causing feelings of, of disappointment, causing feelings of sadness, or even sometimes even cause feelings of anger. Uh, yes, however, it's important for us to remember on today that rejection is a natural part of life. 
and it doesn't define your worth as a person. Uh, no, but the good news of rejection is it can offer opportunities for growth. Uh, the good news of rejection is that it can offer opportunities of resilience and self-reflection. And understanding that rejection is not a reflection of your value, uh, but rather a response to specific circumstances or preferences can help us to navigate through uh, rejection with grace and with resilience. Uh, rejection can be uh, particularly uh, difficult because it often triggers our natural need for acceptance or belonging. Uh, none of us like to be rejected. We all want to be accepted. We all want to feel like we belong uh, to some group or to some people. We all want to be accepted in some form or fashion in our lives. And, and, and when we are rejected, uh, it can feel like a personal attack. Or when we are rejected, it can feel like a, a personal failure causing us to even doubt ourselves or even doubt our ability. However, it's essential to recognize that rejection is often subjective and influenced by various factors beyond our control, uh, such as timing and compatibility or circumstances. And may I submit to you on this morning, uh, my brothers and sisters, that experiencing rejection uh, can, um, can provide a valuable insight uh, into ourselves and our goals. And what it can do is that it can prompt us uh, to reassess our approach. Uh, it can prompt us to refine our skills. Um, uh, or it can prompt us to explore new opportunities that align better with our aspirations. And so by viewing rejection as a, a learning experience uh, rather than a definitive setback, um, what we do is we can turn it into a means of personal growth and development. And so my brothers and sisters on this morning is crucial for us to practice some form of self-compassion and resilience when facing rejection. Uh, what are you talking about, uh, Pastor? Uh, rather than dwelling on the negative emotions of rejection, uh, we ought to focus on acknowledging and processing them constructively. Have I got a witness? Uh, such is the discipline uh, discovered in the discourse of our text on this morning, uh, where we find the events leading up to and including the crucifixion of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but prior to the events in our text on this morning, about six chapters before our highlighted text on this morning, uh, and within a five-day period, uh, Jesus had, had rode in on a donkey in Jerusalem, and the crowd had given him praise, and the crowd had given him honor, shouting to him, Hosanna, the Son of God. Uh, they said, Hosanna, uh, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And, and Hosanna uh, means save us. Uh, this is what the people uh, were shouting. They were giving him honor and they were giving him glory. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. But less than a week later, in the span of five days to be exact, Jesus had been handed over to the Roman governor by the name of Pontius Pilate. Uh, yeah, by the Jewish religious leaders. Uh, yeah, Matthew 27 and 17 tells us uh, it presents a, a pivotal moment uh, where Pilate offers to release Jesus or he offers to release Barabbas to the crowd doing Passover. Uh, so Pilate questions Jesus, uh, but finds no fault in him. Uh, Pilate asks this man all kinds of questions, but the end result of this thing is that Pilate says that, that I can find no fault in him. But despite Pilate's efforts to spare Jesus, uh, watch this, the crowd, uh, influenced by the religious leaders, uh, what they do is they choose Barabbas for release and demand 
understands Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, this passage here on this morning highlights the theme of rejection, uh, revealing how God's ultimate plan of salvation unfolds through the rejection of Jesus by the world. And so I stopped by on this morning to encourage you, uh, yeah, to let you know that rejection is not always a bad thing. Somebody do me a favor and shout, rejection is not always a bad thing. Yeah, uh, but there is some good news about being rejected. Uh, there are a few things that we can learn uh, from rejection on this morning. And the first thing that I need you to understand on this morning is that there's divine purpose behind rejection. There's divine purpose behind rejection. There's divine purpose. Somebody shout divine purpose. Yes, there's divine purpose behind rejection. Uh, yeah, the rejection of Jesus by uh, the crowd indeed reflects a broader pattern of rejection throughout his earthly ministry. Uh, illustrating the complexities of human responses to profound truths and radical love and, and so uh, despite Jesus's teaching uh, which emphasized compassion uh, forgiveness and the kingdom of God uh, his message often challenged uh, the established norms and power structures of society and yeah and here uh, this confrontation uh, with the status quo uh, inevitably led or led to rejection from various uh, quarters including the religious authorities of that day and the societal elites uh, yeah so from a religious standpoint on this morning back in the text Jesus is uh, his teachings often clash with the rigid interpretations of the law held by the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, uh, his emphasis on mercy over legalism and his association with the marginalized uh, individuals uh, it challenged their authority and threaten their influence. Uh, yeah, and so as a result of this, uh, many religious leaders, uh, uh, they rejected Jesus and, and they actively sought to discredit him and, and they actively sought to eliminate him. And so Jesus' message of inclusivity uh, and love uh, uh, for all encountered resistance from societal elites uh, who benefited, if you will, uh, from the existing societal or societal and, and, and social hierarchies. Um, uh, his outreach to the poor, his outreach to the sick and uh, the outcast, what it did was it challenged um, uh, the prevailing notion of worthiness and status, um, unsettling those who benefited uh, from their uh, privileged positions uh, in society. And so Jesus' rejection here in the text on this morning, my brothers and sisters, was not only limited to the religious and societal elites, uh, but it extended to the broader population as well. Um, uh, what are you talking about, Pastor? It extended to the broader population as well. Despite witnessing all the miracles that Jesus had done and despite witnessing and experiencing his demonstration of love and his demonstration of compassion, uh, many people still were unable and unwilling to accept the message that Jesus had to offer. Yeah, some of them were skeptical uh, of his claims of being the Messiah. Uh, some of them were skeptical of his claim of being uh, the Christ. And, and while others were fearful of the implications of his teachings for their lives and their communities. And ultimately, Jesus, uh, his rejection by the crowd, it reflects uh, the human tendency to resist change. Have I got a witness? A lot of times we resist change. We resist this challenge and, and discomfort even uh, when it comes from a source of profound truth and it comes from a source of profound love. Uh, his ministry serves as a powerful reminder that watch this rejection is often a consequence of speaking truth to power and challenging the injustices and inequalities of the world. And so here, despite facing rejection and opposition, uh, Jesus remained steadfast in his mission. 
uh, yeah, exemplifying resilience, uh, exemplifying compassion and unwavering commitment to love and to justice. Uh, yeah, but the good news of Jesus being rejected was it was a part of God's divine plan for redemption. Uh, yeah, what are you saying, Pastor? Uh, God allowed Jesus to be rejected by the world so that through his sacrifice, uh, humanity might find reconciliation and salvation. Have we got a witness in this place? And so might I suggest on this morning that while rejection may uh, seem like a setback, uh, from God's perspective, uh, it becomes a necessary step toward accomplishing his purpose. And so it was in the Lord's rejection uh, that we see God's sovereignty and love working in mysterious ways uh, yeah, to bring about our redemption. Do me a favor. Somebody shout thank God for rejection. Yeah, yeah, you didn't say it like you mean it. Say, thank God for rejection. Yeah, not only uh, is there divine purpose uh, behind rejection, uh, but my brothers and sisters, the second thing that we can learn from this message on this morning is the transformative impact of rejection. Yes, the transformative impact of rejection. And so rather than symbolizing defeat, uh, the rejection of Jesus, what it does is it serves as a, a pivotal moment in human history, uh, marking the beginning of God's plan for redemption. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? Uh, Jesus is crucifixion as a result of societal rejection uh, becomes the cornerstone of salvation for humanity. Uh, it was in Jesus' rejection uh, that God reveals his boundless love uh, by providing a pathway to forgiveness and reconciliation. Uh, yeah, break it down one time for me, Pastor. Uh, yeah, uh, what was once a symbol of disgrace and dismissal. Uh, the cross now becomes the ultimate symbol of hope and restoration. Have I got a witness in this place? Um, uh, Jesus willing embraces rejection uh, yeah understanding that his sacrificial death would bring about humanity's redemption uh, so yeah what Jesus did was he embraced rejection knowing that if he embraced rejection then what he would do is he would die for you and then he would die for me if he embraced rejection then what he would do is he would die to redeem man back to God have I got a witness in this place so uh, he embraced Embraces rejection. His, his triumph over death through his resurrection signifies that rejection does not have the final word. I, I know, but it serves as the gateway to uh, a new life and it serves as a gateway to holiness. Oh, so somebody do me a favor and shout, thank God for rejection. Yes, it has been beneficiaries of God's grace. My brothers and my sisters, you and I, we find comfort in the transformative power of God and uh, through Jesus' rejection. Uh, it's through his rejection that we receive the precious gift of salvation, enabling us to embrace abundant life, both in the present and for eternity. Do me a favor. Somebody ought to say, thank God for rejection. Uh, yeah, thank God. Come on, say you didn't say it like you mean it. Say, thank God for rejection. Yeah, yeah. So, my brothers and my sisters, there is divine purpose uh, behind rejection. And then there's the transformative impact of rejection. Uh, but my third and my final point of this message on this morning is that we must embrace rejection as a pathway to spiritual development. Somebody shout spiritual development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must embrace rejection as a pathway to spiritual development. Uh, yes, instead of perceiving rejection solely uh, through a negative lens. Uh, my brothers and sisters, what we must do is we can choose uh, to view it as a journey towards spiritual maturity uh, and growth, if you will. Uh, similar to uh, the physical um, uh, workout, that, that this physical workout, it strengthens our natural body. Uh, facing rejection, my brothers and sisters, it 
it can fortify our faith and it can fortify our character uh, if you allow it to work for you. And might I suggest on this morning that during your times of rejection, uh, we are compelled uh, uh, to deepen our reliance on God and on the promises that he made. And it's in through it's through prayer and it's through dependence on God that that we learn uh, to lean more profoundly on the grace of God. And might I also suggest on this morning that uh, rejection serves as a classroom where, where virtues like humility and, and virtues like empathy and virtues like uh, uh, perseverance are nurtured. And, and it's by experiencing rejection, my brothers and my sisters, that we gain insight into the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ and his willingness to endure rejection for our sake. Uh, yeah, and so by embracing rejection as a pathway uh, to spiritual development, uh, uh, what we do is we we emerge from such experiences transformed. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what God has been talking about all year long, being transformed. Uh, uh, he's been saying that this is the year of transformation. And so by embracing rejection in our lives, uh, uh, we embrace rejection as a pathway uh, to spiritual development. Uh, development and what we do is we emerge from uh, such experiences and we emerge from such experiences transformed uh, uh, yeah we, we process a, and we possess a, a strengthened faith and a heightened uh, ability to demonstrate love and compassion and rather than allowing rejection uh, to embitter us um, uh, my brothers and my sisters it becomes a tool for refinement it becomes a tool uh, molding us into the vessels of God's grace and his mercy. Uh, somebody do me a favor and shout thank God for a rejection. Yeah, my brothers and my sisters, as I begin to bring this thing to a close on this morning, I stop by to tell you on this morning that rejection is not always a bad thing. Uh, why? Because it's through rejection uh, that God is transforming our lives. Uh, yeah, what are you saying, Pastor? Uh, being rejected identifies us with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, when we experience rejection, uh, what it does is it, it can deepen our spiritual connection with Jesus Christ um, uh, who himself experienced rejection and he experienced suffering during his earthly ministry and Romans 8 and 17 it lets us know uh, that sharing in Christ's suffering uh, uh, when we share in the sufferings of Jesus Christ um, uh, Romans let us know that we also share in his glory uh, uh, yes yeah, so it's through rejection that that we learn humility and we learn dependence on God. Um, uh, my brothers and my sisters, rejection can humble us. Um, uh, it can remind us of our dependence on the grace and the guidance of God. Um, uh, it encourages reliance on God's strength rather than on our own abilities or on the approval of others. Um, uh, yeah, so in doing rejection, uh, what it can do is it, it can foster spiritual growth um, and carry character formation in our lives um, as it challenges us to embody virtues um, uh, such as patience and, and virtues such as forgiveness and, and virtues such as perseverance uh, reflecting the image of the Lord Jesus Christ um, uh, in our lives um, and I stop by to let you know that facing rejection um, uh, what it can do is it can refine our faith um, uh, deepening our trust in God's sovereignty and in his plan now, even when circumstances seem discouraging and when circumstances seem uncertainty uh, and yet uncertain uh, what it does it, it prompts us um, uh, to surrender our desires to the will of God uh, and then it prompts us to trust in the timing of God um, uh, somebody do me a favor and say thank God for a rejection 
Yeah, I'm my brothers and my sisters. I'm, uh, the good news of being rejected is I'm, uh, it serves as an opportunity I, uh, to bear witness to our faith and to testify to God's faithfulness, to testify to his grace and his love even in the midst of adversity. I uh, guess, and when we respond to rejection uh, with love, uh, when we respond to rejection with grace um, and forgiveness, what we do is we reflect uh, Christ in the light we reflect Christ's light in the lives of others um, uh, do me a favor somebody shout thank God for rejection uh, yeah you're going to get it in a minute somebody wake up and been here and say thank God for rejection uh, yeah and I'm telling you right now some of y'all rejecting me right now but I'm still going to preach Hey, anyway, I, I'm done, almost done. I've revealed and made the Lord. God bless you. Real good. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Yes, Lord, I do. I can feel it. I, I can feel you trying to bind me up. It don't make me no difference. Uh, yeah, but I'm preaching the word of God, so it don't make me no difference. May the Lord bless your heart and bless your soul real good until you can get this word and it can transform your life. Uh, uh, but as I press the rewind button in my mind, my brothers and my sisters, uh, uh, I thought about the many times that I had to face rejection uh, yes anybody thank you my brother anybody ever had to face rejection in their lives I, I, I thought of, uh, about when I faced rejection in my life um, uh, maybe I thought it was the end of the world as we knew it um, I thought when I faced rejection in my life I thought I couldn't go no further I thought I was done I, I thought it was all over for me I, I, I thought it was uh, uh, the worst thing that could have ever happened to me in my life um, uh, but when I stopped and I look at what God has done for me I'm, uh, in the midst of rejection. I'm, I can't help but to stop and give God glory. I have a got a witness in this place uh, uh, why do you give God glory Cole? Uh, because of the simple fact that he took me uh, and he took my rejections uh, and he made something beautiful out of my life uh, have I got a witness it was through being rejected uh, uh, that I was able to draw closer to Jesus Christ uh, as he drew closer to me uh, uh, yes it was through being rejected uh, that I was able to see uh, that I was able to embrace and walk in God's divine purpose for my life uh, and so the good news of being rejected was uh, uh, that I learned that what uh, I thought that I really wanted in my life uh, uh, was not what I really wanted and not what I really needed in my life uh, uh, my brothers and my sisters uh, uh, may I tell you on today uh, some of y'all looking at me like my name stand let me take my glasses off because I can't see y'all and I can't see nothing anyway uh, a rejection can uh, uh, be seen as a part of God's greater plan for your life. Huh? I stop by to let you know that if you trust in God's sovereignty, uh, yeah, it means recognizing that closed doors often lead to a better opportunity aligned with his purpose for your life. Huh? And so the good news of rejection is huh? uh, just as gold is refined in the fire, huh? uh, my brothers and my sisters, rejection can refine your character. Uh, rejection can refine your faith. Uh, uh, it tests and strengthens your reliance on the almighty God. Uh, uh, what does it do, Pastor? It, it teaches us patience. Uh, uh, what does it do, Pastor? It teaches us perseverance. Uh, uh, what does it do, Pastor? It teaches us humility. And so my brothers and my sisters, uh, uh, the good news of rejection is uh, uh, that rejection invites you uh, uh, to surrender your plans and your desires to the will of God. Uh, uh, what are you saying, Pastor? It is an opportunity huh, uh, to align your aspirations with God's purpose um, and trust that God knows uh, uh, what is best for you and what is best for your life uh, and then even if it means uh, uh, facing disappointments in your life uh, even if it means facing some type of disappointment a uh, uh, short term in your life uh, and so my brothers and my sisters the good news uh, of being rejected uh, is that rejection in 
invites you uh, uh, to surrender your plans and your will over to God's will. Uh, it's an opportunity to align your aspirations and your purpose and trust that God knows what's best for you even in the midst of facing disappointments short term. Uh, have I got a witness in this place? Uh, uh, yeah, the good news of being rejected uh, is that rejection can challenge your sense of self-worth. Uh, uh, but as a Christian, uh, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, your identity is rooted in Jesus uh, and not in worldly acceptance. Uh, uh, your identity is rooted in Jesus uh, and not what folk think about you. Uh, have I got a witness in this place? Uh, uh, you have to remember that you are deeply loved uh, and you are deeply accepted by God uh, uh, regardless of earthly outcomes uh, uh, that brings comfort uh, and resilience in your life uh, when you know that even when the world rejects you uh, there is uh, a God uh, on your side uh, that even when the world rejects you uh, he still says I still love you uh, I'm still calling you uh, I still want you uh, I still got better plans for you uh, I'm still going to take care of you uh, I'm still going to provide for you uh, I'm still going to wake you up in the morning uh, I'm still going to breathe the breath of life in your body uh, I'm still going to shield and protect you uh, when you're sick I'm still going to heal you uh, when you're lonely I'm still going to comfort you uh, when your heart gets broke I'm still going to mend it uh, that's the God that we serve uh, the good news uh, of being rejected is uh, how you handle rejection uh, can be a powerful testimony of your faith uh, uh, demonstrating grace uh, demonstrating forgiveness uh, and trust in God's provision uh, amidst disappointment uh, what it can do uh, you can inspire others uh, and ultimately give God glory uh, in your life uh, when you accept rejection uh, and the good news uh, of being rejected uh, is that rejection uh, can drive you to deeper prayer uh, that's what rejection can do uh, when you reject it uh, rejection can make you pray more uh, that's what rejection can do uh, trust that when you reject it rejection will make you read your bible more uh, that's what rejection can do when you reject it rejection will make you draw closer to jesus have i got a witness in this place uh, when you reject it you have to rely on the guidance of god uh, it invites you uh, to seek god's wisdom uh, it invites you uh, to seek god's discernment uh, as you navigate future opportunities uh, and decisions. Uh, well, I'm done. I've healed. Uh, and may the Lord God bless you real good. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, in the grand scheme of eternity, uh, earthly rejections, uh, uh, they pale in comparison uh, to the promises of God. Uh, keeping an internal perspective, uh, what it does is it helps you to see rejection uh, as temporary. Uh, oh yeah, the rejection that you face in your life uh, it's only temporary uh, and it's fleeting uh, uh, while the rewards of obedience to God uh, and faithfulness to God uh, what it does is it endures forever uh, somebody do me a favor in this place uh, somebody shout thank God for rejection uh, somebody say thank God uh, for rejection huh? it's in rejection huh? that you learn huh? to draw closer to God huh? it's in rejection huh? that when you draw closer to God huh? then he will draw closer to you huh? it's in rejection that I learn how to lean and depend on Jesus huh? because he is huh? my strength huh? and he is huh? my guide and I found out huh? that if I I trust him he will he will provide in my rejection I learned that God he is on my side in my rejection I learned that he has greater doors that he's about to open in my life 
Rejection is not always a bad thing. When you reject it, Kathy, I stop by to tell you that God is setting you up for something greater. Whenever you face rejection, God is about to do something miraculous in your life. Have I got a witness in this place? Somebody do me a favor. Somebody say, thank God for rejection. Thank God for rejection. Can somebody truthfully say, thank God for rejection. The good news of being rejected is that even in the midst of being rejected, God has greater for you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The good news of being rejected. The next time that you go for a job interview and they pick somebody else, don't think it to be a bad thing because that ain't what God had for you. Pumpkin God got something greater for you. Yeah. Uh, the next time that you go and, and you want to approach an individual because you think she look good and, and, and she reject you, uh, uh, don't feel bad about it because the good news is that she ain't the one that God got for you. Yeah, the next time uh, you're rejected and somebody else got your man and he act like he don't want you. Uh, uh, then you just let that brother go because the good news of being rejected is uh, uh, that God got something better for you. Uh, rejection is not a bad thing. Uh, God can take what we look at to be a bad thing and turn that thing around and bless our lives. Uh, it looked bad when Jesus was rejected. It looked bad when he was betrayed by Judas. It looked bad when he rode in the city on the Sunday morning and, and they were dropping palms and they were taking off their clothes and landing on the street singing, Ho Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the Lord. And five days later, the same folk were saying, crucify him, crucify him. It looked bad when he was rejected, but it was because of his rejection that we are all sitting in this place today. Somebody do me a favor and shout, thank God for rejection. Yes. Somebody shout, thank God for rejection. Yes. Every heart in this building standing to your feet. Yes. Thank God for rejection. We thank God because his rejection led to salvation. His rejection led to us being able to spend eternity in the presence of God and not doomed to hell that will soon be cast into a lake of fire. The good news of Jesus being rejected is that he made a way for us to approach the Father. Uh, the good news of Jesus being rejected was he was crucified and because he was crucified, the veil in the temple was rent into and because the veil of the temple was rent into that we now can go to God on our own behalf and we don't have to have a priest going to God on our behalf we can go to God now on our behalf and we don't have to sacrifice any animals because his blood because he was rejected his blood was shed and because his blood was shed for you and for me that we have a right to the tree of life. Perhaps there's one on today that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The doors of the church are open to you. Why don't you come? What a beautiful day to give your life to the Lord. The Bible lets us know that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus we believe that God raised him from the dead. Then the Bible lets us know that you shall be saved. Is it anybody on today that want to give their life to the Lord? If that's you on today, why don't you come? Maybe it's one that want to be baptized on today. Why don't you come? The doors of the church are open to you.
maybe it's one that, that you don't have a church home or you would like to make the Ivory Hill Baptist Church your church home. Listen, Ivory Hill is a good church. Lovable people, they want to love you. They would love to uh, be your church family and I would love to serve as your pastor. Why don't you come? Would there be one? And this final call is for someone standing in the need of prayer. Maybe you're standing in the need of prayer or you have a loved one standing in the need of prayer, a friend or a foe. The altar is open to you right now. Why don't you come at this time? Will there be one? Will there be one at this time? The good news of being rejected is my brothers and my sisters don't think of rejection of being a bad thing. When you're rejected, you think about God has something greater for my life. Have I got a witness in this place? Amen. Amen. Why don't you come? Amen. 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 She's smiling. Amen. Amen, amen. My brothers and my sisters, we have little Jakiah Macon who is coming. She's given her life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and she come to be a candidate for baptism. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Amen, amen. She professed, and she confessed that she believes that Jesus is the Son of God. She asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into her heart to save her and to forgive her of her sin. And so we're going to do what God has commissioned us to do. We're going to baptize her. Amen. And we thank God for her. I asked her how old was she? She said, I'm 11, about to be 12. I said, yeah, I remember I used to say that. But now we get to the point where I used to be 40. Yeah, amen. And we thank God for her on today. Jakaya Megan, come on, let's give her another hand. Amen. Amen. Sister Geraldine is not here. Uh, will you do me a favor, uh, Sister Megan, before you leave, do you see Sister Brenda standing back there? She had you see her waving before you leave if you see her and give her your information and stuff like that we'll get everything ready and then we'll let you know uh what date we're going to uh schedule for baptism amen 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 thank god let's thank god for her on today amen amen father we thank you for sister making on today we thank you god for her walking up and giving her life to you we thank you god for just allowing her to step out boldly before the people to let her let everyone know that she believes that you are the son of god and so father i pray right now that you would continue to bless her life i pray that you would touch her from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet i pray that you would continue to keep your loving arms wrapped around her bless her family that walk down here with her on today i pray that you would bless their home right now god i pray that you would bless each one of them from the crown of their head down to the sole of their feet and whatever it is that they're standing in need of god if it be thy will i pray that you would grant it unto them i pray that god you would just allow them to draw closer to you that you would get the glory out of their lives for this is our prayer and it's in jesus name we pray and we ask all things and the people of god said amen amen and amen make sure you see sister brenda before you leave amen come on let's give them another hand amen amen while you're yet standing to your feet and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And the redeemed of the Lord said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.